Um, also, advertising in schools. There are some companies out there. Uh, one in particular was Channel One. Uh, what they would do is they would supply educational educational items, film strips, stuff like that. But with, while doing that, they also included advertisements for certain products, such as uh, Sunny Delight. <laughs> If you don't know what that is, it's an orange drink. Uh, I remember those commercials. I always wanted the purple stuff. Problem, guys? Suddenly the light's okay. Eh, I'm not a fan, but I always wanted the purple stuff. Anyway, um, moving on. Also, impact on health. Things such as eating disorders. They would have real thin supermodels. Advert being used for advertisements, and they, they were not a real representation of women or, or, or of these growing or of teenage women that were growing up. And a lot of them, in an effort to achieve that status, would wind up getting eating disorders and we'd be sometimes dying and being only in the hospital. It's a very difficult situation dealing with that. The tobacco companies. For the longest time, tobacco companies would intentionally market to kids. Think of Joe Camel. I mean, why, what adult would really care about Joe Camel? It was totally, it was a cartoon character who smoked. Um, he wasn't, he didn't have a cartoon series or anything, but the character on their print and in their advertisements and on their box looked like a cartoon character. Uh, alcohol, many, many thousands and thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people have died from alcohol-related injuries, either through car accidents through drunk driving or just impact of uh, the of, of years of alcohol abuse and there were some effects to that now I know today you're used to seeing hard alcohol ads on the air be about liquor or Jose Cuervo or something like that until very recently there weren't hard alcohol ads on television or radio. Yeah, beer was still there, but not the hard alcohol. That's only been rather recent and had been a band for a long time. Uh, that's only changed very, very recently. <laughs> and of course, uh, prescription drugs. How many times do you watch, you know, how many times you watch a commercial, uh, you're in commercial break and you see this wonderful prescription, this, this wonderful drug miracle that will cure you of certain terrible maladies but might have six or seven other side effects that could be as bad if not worse uh, oh by the way if you happen to start growing a tail please stop using said miracle cure that has very much been an issue as well now with all these concerns there have been some organizations out there that have been created to make sure what is going out as a commercial uh, is not making false claims and not going too over the top. It is hard. They do sometimes, things do sometimes slip through, but there are certain uh, organizations out there partially from grassroots and then partially from government oversight. One such thing is a commercial alert. This was created by uh, former consumer advocate Ralph Nader. Over the years, especially over the 70s into the 80s, he was a consumer advocate. He was always reporting about and looking into malfeasance when it came to advertising or claims of certain products. He was always on top of that. That was his big thing. He has run for president a couple times over the years. Um, but his uh, commercial alert, he was, he was uh, based up for that. And he, they were worried about excessive commercialism. They didn't want too much commercialism in the society because they didn't want it to go out of where it was supposed to be. They didn't want life to be one big commercial and everything be endorsed, which sadly seems to be where we are right now. If you look at lots of schools and they have certain athletic complexes that are sponsored by possibly local uh, businesses, so... I think there's been some issues and problems with that recently, but for a long time he, he was out there. One of the things they also did was uh, 
They watched uh, cross promotion uh, with Hollywood Studios and fast food companies, parties and Warner Brothers, the Man of Steel movie. Uh, also McDonald's and movies like The Croods and How to Train Your Dragon 2 are a couple examples. So, um, and actually these, these cross promotions have helped these movie companies. People aren't buying as many DVDs or Blu-rays anymore, um, especially with uh, digital formats uh, being downloaded and stuff like that. So they've tried to find new, in, new ways to make money, and then that was one of them. One of the things the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, tackles is what is called puffery. These are ads that have a lot of exaggeration, a lot of hyperbole in it. And these are ads that, that leave out certain information they should probably have in there. In one example, there was a 1990 Volvo commercial. The monster trucks were really big back then, and monster trucks going over all these line of cars. And they crushed every single car but the Volvo. Um, but they made a point that they just happened to forget, oops, we had it specially reinforced as opposed to the other cars that weren't. They took special means to make the car seem more safe than the others. Another one back in uh, 2003, FTC, Ephedra was considered this miracle fat burner. It was everywhere. Uh, you could definitely see it, but apparently there was there was lots of it was it was advertised as safe, uh, miracle weight loss, um, but it wound up causing high blood pressure, uh, heart disease. Um, it was causing lots of uh, side effects that weren't supposed to be there, all to like lose a few extra pounds. Shortly after that, they uh, banned Fedra, and it was no longer there. You could not get it anymore because of those terrible side effects. Eventually, with all the cigarette ads and all the, the terrible damage cigarettes were doing and been proving to killing so many people with their product and willingly putting out false claims and bad research and basically lying to the American people for so many years, part of that settlement was to create a massive campaign by putting a lot of money into anti-smoking commercials, anti-smoking PSAs. It was called the Truth Campaign. And in these campaigns, they were, they were not glorifying it. They were showing people and kids lying down outside a building, outside a cigarette company building, and they were lying down showing how many millions of people died because of cigarette smoking. Or they would have actual former smokers on. People might have emphysema hooked up to different pieces of equipment or people who've been ravaged who were once very young looking and then after years and years of smoking they would have fake jaws or their hair would be completely gone or they got cancer or and it totally destroyed the way they looked and the way they could function and it was shock value it was absolute shock value, and it worked and it was recognized 80 percent of those teens say this is what I remember most because they hit them over the head with it. They put out shocking images to make sure less teens would start smoking. Now we have the, it, now we have the issue with with vaping and they market that as oh it's just water but now we're finding once again there's something more than just water in there because in many cases it might be even worse than smoking. Um, so it's tearing up you on doing far more damage in a shorter amount of time. Don't be surprised once the lawsuits start popping up here uh, with, with with vaping. Uh, so it, and, and with vaping and electronic cigarettes. So watch out for that. That, that should be coming up pretty soon. Even though these things just have recently started down the line, it's going to start popping up. And then there's the role in politics. You have become very. You are very, very familiar with it. They've had them long before I came along, um, advertising and politics. Uh, and it's trying to make people think to think a certain way. Or this person's great. This person will kill you. If you vote for this person, they're going to throw you over the cliff. They're going to, they're going to dirty the water. Or this person is so out of touch.
This person's going to be a dictator. Do you see who they're talking to? Do you see them in this picture? That must mean they're evil. Evil. But what are you really getting at? at? Oh, paid for by whatever. Paid for by this group. We have no clue who they are. But you know they are in one way, shape, or form affiliated with one group or another, with one party or another. How much information can you get in there? So well, a lot of times they just put stuff in there. And oh, you ever notice like the, you ever, they voted for this statute that hurt all these people. And they put it in very fine writing at the bottom. Legislation number 724, paragraph 3, section 4, uh, the proven congressional record that they voted for this. They might have voted for the thing, but they had nothing to do with what they were originally voting for. Maybe it had maybe there was it maybe there was some something thrown in, maybe something was thrown into a bigger piece of legislation that this bad point, this bad aspect was just kind of hidden in there. I don't know, could be, maybe they did vote for it. But did you, did, were you really gonna get anything out of 30 seconds? It will continue to be going on. One of the most famous ones was Barry Goldwater. Back in the 60s, long before me, even before I was born, before uh, long before you guys were born, they actually put out, it was Barry Goldwater. He was a candidate back in the 60s, and during against LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, they had this famous commercial of a little girl. Hey, watch it. Here you go. Take a look. I think they was going to, and remember, this was during the Cold War with the Soviet Union, very different time. A significant portion of the, of the world was also communist, nuclear war. This is all because he was taken out of context of what he asked about uh, a nuclear option, and it was completely taken out of context, and they created this commercial, which still stands to this day as one of the most famous political ads of all time. And they're still doing that. Either side, the, the person's either going to be Satan themselves, or the next Hitler, or the next Lenin, or the next Stalin, or they always seem to go into that. And you have images of, you know, and, or this person doesn't care about you for there. It's going to continue on. Um, what are you really going to get for it? And unfortunately, another aspect of this is the money involved with it. The money raised for political campaigns go towards various types of advertising. And the more advertising you put in there, many times these candidates wind up winning their races. Now, one of the things that uh, has also been uh, the idea of free airtime for politicians. When it's time for an election and it's become earlier and earlier and earlier and earlier than ever before, this is where TV stations, your local TV stations, make lots and lots and lots of money. So you will see them advertising one candidate, and then sometime later, they'll be advertising for their opponent. Why? Because they gave them money. That's all they care about, and they make lots of it. The local stations make lots and lots and lots of money. So don't let them fool you. Whoever's willing to pay them for airtime will pay the whatever they need to pay them especially in those quote-unquote swing states where it could go either way. Those local stations, radio and TV stations, are making lots and mon lots of money uh, for that. You know, with all the criticism of commercialism and how there's always a campaign to scale back commercialism, it doesn't really seem to work. Um, the, the advertising just finds new ways to, adver to to get their words out, to get those, to promote those goods, to promote those uh, services. Just to think about the the Super Bowl with the, how much it costs to to, uh, to put on an ad. You're talking over five million dollars easy um, for uh, for a thirty second spot. Why? Because there's so many people watching. That's the whole point. You have all those eyes there watching, there's a better chance that you might buy said good or service. Over the years, even with all the advertising, public does stay kind of back with it with their advertising. 
It's with... Uh, sometimes people get taken in by the advertising, but there's still a lot of people out there that tread very carefully when it comes to advertising. They're not as are weary of these things, especially from an online standpoint. And there's only so many different ways you can advertise. People are becoming better media savvy from some aspects of it. But there'll always be something new. There will be always be a new way to advertise, and advertising will be there forever, uh, forever and ever. And for some of you, that's a real good thing for you because you the the advertising in 20 years from now might be completely different, a totally new market, a totally different medium. But you guys are starting to just get your foot in the door. You're starting to learn about it, and some of you in this room will be creating. Uh, creating advertising campaigns and commercials and whatever the newest type of thing that will be out there in 20 years, whatever the technology is. So up, up, and away, and see you next time.